Hi, welcome to Glow's Kendra Kitchen and I'm Glow. Well, today we have decided that we're going to have meatloaf for dinner. And uh, I'm sure everybody has their own personal recipe, but I thought I would show you one of the ways that I make mine. And um, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I do is I prepare everything you know, as far as cutting up my veggies and stuff in advance prior to getting started. And the reason I do that, I'm just turning this down a little bit because it's, it's starting to smoke, um, is so it's easier to put it all together. So I have my cast iron pan here heating up and you can tell, I don't know if you can see, but it's actually smoking, which is good. So I'm going to go ahead and probably put two, probably two tablespoons of olive oil, but not the uh, extra virgin. This is the type for sauteing. So it's been pressed at least twice probably. And I have one medium onion here that I've chopped up into bite-sized pieces. I'm going to go ahead and put that in here. I always saute my vegetables before I put it in my meatloaf. I find that it gives it a better flavor and you don't have all that crunchiness going on in your meatloaf. I have a half a cup of red pepper. I have a half a cup of green pepper and you can see how I cut that up as well. I have one stalk of our one rib of celery rather. So it's probably about a half a cup as well. And that one piece fell out, so there it goes. I have about a cup of um, shred like bite-sized pieces of cabbage. And I know probably a lot of people have never thought about putting cabbage in their meatloaf, but I'm gonna tell you, it gives it a wonderful sweet flavor. And it's healthy. So I'm going to go ahead and just stir this up a little. Okay. I have this on medium, in case you guys are wondering. I may have to turn it down a little as it continues to cook here, but for right now this is fine. The reason I got this started right away is because after this is done sauteing and becoming, you know, kind of translucent, um, you know, and pretty much partially cooked, I um, have to let that cool. So um, that's why I got it started in the beginning. I'm going to just move these back over here. I always have a sink full of warm, sunny water. And the um, reason I do that is it's easier to clean up, plus I can always wash my hands. Because when you're making meatloaf or anything actually in the kitchen, it's so important to have clean hands. So the next thing we're going to do is, let me find my bowl here. This is the bowl that I'm going to use to mix up my meatloaf. But the first thing I need to do is to put some milk in here. So I'm going to go ahead and put in about a half, this is a cup here, but I'm going to put about half a cup in, start. I'm a cook that cooks by eye a lot and I'm, after starting this um, channel, I decided I really need to start trying to measure things out so everybody knows, you know, the approximate amounts. And um, so I've been trying to be very good about that. So I've got that going, and now I'm going to put in, and you guys probably have, um, I didn't know about this at least until I found this trick on America's Test Kitchen. Oh, here's my piece of They recommended putting in just plain gelatin. The reason they do that is it takes on the texture of veal and meatloaf or like in uh, meatballs and stuff. And I don't use veal in my meatloaf. Veal is very expensive. I use um, brown beef and this is probably 80-20. I have the butcher usually do mine up out of roast that they have and then I use ground pork. So that's a pound of each of those. So when you use plain gelatin, you need to bloom it. This is about a teaspoon here, and I'm going to go ahead and just shake that over this milk. And the, leave it here for about five minutes while it's blooming. And what that means is it just becomes more gel instead of the powder form. So I'm going to be back in a few minutes, and we'll go on to the next step. 
Well, our vegetables over here are, you can see they're starting to get nice and happy here in the pan. And now at the time, I'm gonna add in one clove of garlic. And how I do my garlic is I peel it, smash it. Actually, I smash it with my um, hammer. I have a wooden hammer I use on my chopping block. And then I remove the peel off of it and then I smash it up real good, almost like a paste. And I'm adding that in. The reason I do that, I find that it dissolves better into whatever I'm cooking. And um, I just have done that for many, many years. So anyway, we're going to let that continue to cook. The reason I put the garlic in towards the end is because we don't want that garlic to burn. Smelling good, isn't it? Yes, it is, Miss Ball. And at the same time here, I'm going to put some dried herbs in so they start blooming too. About a half a teaspoon of thyme. And I like to rub it in my hand to get it going. And this is marjoram. It's actually related to the mint family and it just adds a great flavor to meatloaf. And that's probably a half a teaspoon there. Yeah. See what else we need to put in there right now. You can put in a little cumin. Cumin will give it an earthy flavor. Cumin as well. So that's maybe an eighth of a teaspoon, not much. And um, I'm just stir that up. There's some other uh, seasonings we're going to be putting in, but not at the moment. Oh, that smells really good. Okay. So the next thing, this is blooming here. I don't know if you can see, but the uh, gelatin is starting to dissolve into that milk. And that's what you want. Um, it's going to be a nice gel if I, by the time it's done. And I'm going to just set that there for the moment because I want to share with you next. There's many things you can put in your meatloaf as far as um, your bread. Some people put in Ritz crackers, saltine crackers, uh, fresh bread, dry bread. I, in this particular meatloaf, I like to use a combination of Pepperidge Farm cornbread stuffing and their traditional. So it's a half a cup of each. And then I use a ho one Holland rusk, and I'll show you what that is. Our family has always used Holland rusk in cooking, and... Turn it to the right. That's cool. Oh, I'm sorry. That's better. Okay. Um, okay it's kind of that. a sweet flavor to it, but not yeah. a, a lot. And um, Europeans eat it a lot for breakfast and, you know, like snacks and stuff. It goes really well, I find, in meatloaf. So I'm going to just go ahead and break this up. And I'll be back in just a moment after I get that done, and I'll show you the next step. Well, our veggies here are starting to brown a little, which is exactly what I wanted but I don't want them to brown a lot. So I already turned off my burner and I'm going to just let this rest here while we continue with the rest. So I've had this blooming now about five minutes and I have two eggs that I'm going to whip up and they're large eggs and I have found that for each pound of meat that I'm going to put in my meatloaf I use one egg for each pound. So I have two pounds so I have two eggs. And you just want to kind of beat them up so they're mixed up really good. Just pour that right in there. There we go. Move this out of the way. And you just mix the egg up with the egg and our with the milk and the gelatin. So now I'm going to add the um, stuffing that I have here along with the Holland breast. I'm going to put that in. And the goal here is you want this to uh, soak up that milk and everything. And then sometimes I have to add more milk and that's why I started off with a cup of milk over here and only have used half of it so far. So that's all in there and getting happy. 
So at the same time, we're going to add a few other things. One of them is ketchup, and I do two to three really good squirts, so it's about a half a cup. One, two, three. Then I put in pap sweet paprika, and I just um, shake it in. And I would say it's probably an eighth of a teaspoon. And I use allspice, just a few dashes. One, two, three. And this is another ingredient that I had not put in my meatloaf for many years. I, it's been probably 30 years that I've used it now, though. And I uh, got the tip from a friend of mine. Her name is Mary Boehner, and she's from Colorado. And when we went over to her place for dinner one night, she made meatloaf, and she put celery seed in it. And I'll tell you, it was one of the best meatloafs I've ever had. So since that time, I've always put celery seed in mine. So I'm going to do about a half a teaspoon, maybe a little bit more. Let's say three quarters. And I put nutmeg in mine. And I do a few dashes. Well, oh, top went down. I would say that's probably an eighth of a teaspoon. That top was blocking it. The other thing I put in is ground mustard. If you don't have ground mustard on hand, use Dijon mustard or mustard or regular mustard. It'll be just fine. And I usually do about a half a teaspoon, maybe a little bit more. And I put in Worcestershire sauce. I shake it up good. And that's probably about a teaspoon, maybe a little bit more. Another thing I put in is yeshivas. And it's like a teriyaki sauce and it adds some great flavor. One, two. You guys see down in there? That bread is starting to get soaking up all of that Those goodies. And I can tell just by with my fork, I think I'm going to need to put in a little bit more milk. So I'm going to go ahead and pour some in. So I've probably used, let's see, I have used two thirds of a cup so far. Okay, so we're going to let this set here and get happy for a few minutes and I'll be back. Well, this has been soaking here, I think, um, for enough time. And you can see how that's really thickened up there real nice. So the next thing I'm going to do, I forgot to add oregano. And that goes really well in meatloaf. So I'm going to go ahead and put some of that in. I did five shakes of it. So maybe uh, just over an eighth to maybe a quarter of a teaspoon. Of course, by all means, you put the spices in that you want. And then I'm going to put in a little salt. That's probably a half a teaspoon. And I'm going to do about the same of black pepper, maybe a little bit more of the pepper. The reason I did not put more salt in is because you've got salt going in your uh, other ingredients like the Worcestershire, the Yoshitas, the, um, the ketchup. Uh, it's just, it's a lot. So we're going to take a look at this. And um, I also have another ingredient I'm going to add here. And so I want to make sure, and that has salt in it as well. So I'm just going to stir that up. Now I'm going to turn, well, that's a little bit warm still. So let's take a little break here. I'm going to let this warm for uh, or cool off again for about five minutes and we'll be back. Well, it's been about five minutes now and this is cooled off enough. So I'm going to go ahead and add this. Let's do it this way so you guys can see. I don't like to waste, so 
and you get much of that in there. All those little goodies. There we go. And I'm going to use my Danish or Dutch whisk, whatever you want to call it. Mix this up really good. See how that mixes everything together so nicely? Very nice, Miss Cole. So this is kind of like my secret ingredient. You, It's cheese. And I grated it and I froze it. So I took it out of the freezer just before we came back. And I'm going to go ahead and put that in here. This cheese makes a big difference in meatloaf. But the reason I freeze it is because that way it kind of stays apart and doesn't clump up in the meatloaf. Go ahead. And this is about, I would say, three quarters of a cup, maybe a cup. But you can use any kind of cheese you want. This is Monterey Jack, but I've done it with cheddar. I've done it with Parmesan, whatever you, you wanted to use. And then I've got some fresh parsley that I had chopped up. And there's probably a tablespoon here. If you don't have fresh parsley, by all means, just use it dried. The fresh does have a nice, a nicer flavor, I think, though. But I don't always have it on hand, and if I don't, then I use my dried. So now you can see how that looks. Looking good, Miss Yep. Yeah. So then the next step, before we actually start mixing up the um, the meat into it, um, let's do the topping. There's a little cheese there. Didn't want to waste. So I'm gonna put that over here. Now the topping is brown sugar, and that's about a a shy third of a cup, let's say. That's setting out for a little bit. Then I'm going to do about the same amount of the ketchup. Actually, probably a little bit more ketchup. We'll start with that. That's like four good swords. And when I did the um, the ketchup in the meatloaf mixture, that first squirt that you guys saw go in there, that was such a shy squirt that um, it didn't count. <laughs> it was a very baby squirt. Three and, three and a half. Yeah. Maybe three and a quarter. This is really a shy squirt. So, and then the next ingredient I put in my topping is nutmeg. It makes a huge difference. So that's about three shakes. And I'm going to taste that to make sure that's okay. trying to make room here. So that's going to be our topping on top of the meatloaf. So let's bring this back over. And here's our meat. We got the um, pound of ground beef and the pound of the uh, ground pork. I'm just going to go ahead and slide that in. back in just a minute I'm going to wash my hands because when you mix up things with your hands like this you want to really make sure your hands are nice and clean so I'll be right back. Hi well my hands are all nice and clean now and I always take my rings off. Um, so and another little trick is when you take your rings off put them in like a small dish. I have over here my ring. Oops I'm blocking it in that little small dish over there so I don't lose it. Um, but anyway I put in a little bit of really dry red wine in my meatloaf as well. One, two. So we're going to start off with, you know, like two tablespoons at the most. And we're going to go ahead and mix this up. These are the best tools in the kitchen are your hands when you're trying to mix up stuff. But with that being said, 
one thing is you do not want to over mix your meatloaf. You just kind of want to fold it together. If you over mix it, that's what causes um, meatloaves to be tough. <clears throat> I wish you guys were here to smell this. It just smells really good. It does smell well. Can't wait to eat this. That's all I can say is I've never had good meatloaf in a restaurant, so they must be leaving the cheese out. <laughs> We also like um, meatloaf sandwiches with the leftovers. Oh yeah. It's getting there, isn't it? Looking better, looking good. But you can tell I'm just kind of folding it. I'm not, you know, really working that meat because you don't want it to be tough at all. That goes for when you're making sausage or anything. Or hamburgers, same, same thing. But you just want it to get kind of mixed up well. There, I think that's good. So I'm going to get the dish that I'm going to put this in and I'll be back and I'll show you the next step. Well, I've got everything ready now to put in my pan. One of the things um, I have found is I like to use this pan for my meatloaf. Um, and I don't have a rack or anything to put in the bottom. I could put some foil in there and bunch it up to so that the meatloaf's not setting down in the grease. But I found a trick where you can put heels of bread or stale bread and use that in the bottom and it absorbs some of that grease so your meatloaf's not setting in that grease while it's cooking. So let's go ahead and put the meatloaf in here. And you can make, you know, um, one large one like we're going to do today. You could make two meatloafs that are a pound a piece. Of course, it'd be more than a pound because you got the other ingredients in with it. Or another thing that we have done, and actually quite often we do it, is we make individual meatloafs. And then the leftovers, we freeze. And if I make two one pound meatloafs, I can freeze that too. Um, and sometimes I don't even cook it. I just put it in the freezer, wrap it up real good, and then it's ready to go for a meal. But tonight we're gonna do this whole one. And you don't want to slap it, but you do want to kind of press it together. And shape it the way you want it. There. So I'll be right back. I'm going to wash my hands again, and then I'll show you the next thing I do. Okay, so I got my hands clean. One of the reasons I cleaned my hands is I've got bacon here, and I'm not sure if I'm going to use all of this, but I didn't want to be contaminating stuff, so I thought I'd better just wash my hands before I start messing with it. So this is something my mother always did when she made her meatloaf, and i got to say her meatloaf was delicious. She would take and put bacon across the top. So that's what we always do. And this meatloaf is definitely a combination of different people's recipes that I've ran across through the years. But the bacon is definitely one that I have kept on there. And it, the bacon adds a really nice flavor to your meatloaf. There. So as you can tell, I didn't use all of it, so I'm glad I did wash my hands. So the next thing is I'm going to put about half of this um, sauce on it, and then we'll save the rest of it for after to put on. If I end up using 
more of this than I thought, then um, by all means, I'll just make extra sauce to go with the meatloaf because I'll tell you, this sauce is so good on the meatloaf. What's in the sauce, Miss Cole? It's ketchup and brown sugar and nutmeg. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and use the rest because I kind of contaminated the spoon with the bacon and stuff and you don't want to be eating this that hasn't been cooked since you've been touching the bacon and stuff. So there we go. So that'll be going down into that meatloaf and making it even yummier. So this is going to be put into a 350 degree oven. This will bake probably for an hour and a quarter to an hour and a half. And I'll be back to show you the, the finished dish. Well, our meatloaf is done. I just took it out and it actually took um, almost two hours, one and three quarters hours. But well worth it. Looks good, smells good, Miss Cole. Thank you. Yeah, you're right, it does smell really good. So we're going to let this rest for a good 15, 20 minutes, and we'll be back to sample it. Hi, well, our dinner's ready to eat, and I'll tell you, we can hardly wait to have this for dinner tonight. Lucy's the same way. So here's the meatloaf. Looks good. And mashed potatoes, the Yukon Colts. Superb. That's the, the uh, cabbage. Steamed Exqui cabbage. Exquisite. And then the carrots. Extraordinary. So I'm going to try the meatloaf first. Oh, it smells so good, you guys. I wish you were here for dinner. Mmm. It is so flavorful. And it has that smoothness to it like it would if it had veal in it. And that's because of that gelatin. It is delicious. Not dry at all. Let's try the potatoes. Mmm. Yukon Golds are so good. They're just delicious. If you haven't never tried them, by all means, don't be afraid to uh, purchase them. They're delicious. Let's try the cabbage now. And this is just a regular head of the green cabbage that you buy. Mmm. It is so sweet, you guys. I can see why most people enjoy that as a side. Mm -mm -mm. And they all blend so well together. They pair really well. And now for the carrot. That is delicious. It just goes so well together. Like I said, I wish you were here for dinner tonight. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe to our channel. We would really appreciate it. And give me a comment. I hope you have a great day. Bye.